Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to start UQCC program, part three, Space Network. Dr. Sasaki gives us an introduction. Okay, uh, in this part, we present optical and quantum communications in space. So let me get started with free space optical communication, FSO. When a line of sight link is available, FSO communications can provide a much faster data link than radio frequency communications. And actually, high directionality of the laser beam enables very low interchannel interference and power efficient transmission and compact implementation of the system. Quantum communication enhances the resource efficiency and security of FSO communication. Today, we have a live video connection with Professor Anton Zeilinger in Vienna. He has been leading uh, this field for a long time. Hi, Anton. Are you hearing me? Hello. Good morning, Masahide. Nice oh, good to morning. see you again this way. Yeah, uh, good to see you again. Are you uh, already wake up? I'm not sure. It is 4 o'clock in the morning here. I don't know if I'm already waked up or getting to fall asleep. So if I fall asleep, please wake me up. Okay, sure thing. So could you please start your presentation? Thank you very much. So what you see here is the uh, ground station on Tenerife, operated by the European Space Agency, which we use for a long time to test free space quantum communication. Uh, also with the aim of getting into space. Uh, you see a laser link here, which is a guiding laser to uh, adjust two telescopes, the sending telescope and the receiving telescope onto each other. They are separated by 143 kilometers. Now, uh, most of our work is based on entanglement, which was invented, the name was invented by Erwin Schrödinger, Austrian Nobel Prize winner in 19. Uh, 35, Albert Einstein called it spooky action at a distance and he did not like it. Today we know that it is there, even as Einstein didn't like it, and it is a backbone of a lot of uh, modern quantum communication, and also quantum computation technology. Uh, here's a picture from uh, uh, an earlier experiment between the two Canary Islands of La Palma to the left and Tenerife to the right. Uh, the, we typically send one photon uh, from La Palma to Tenerife of an entangled pair, and the other one is measured uh, locally, or the other one is done, used in some other uh, experiments, as I will show now. Uh, this is a picture of a, of a more recent, from 2012, uh, quantum teleportation experiment over the distance of 143 kilometers, uh, including a classical link, which is necessary in quantum teleportation, and uh, also the, uh, the quantum link. I should mention that at the same time, a very similar experiment was done by the GNV group, also long distance free space, over a distance close to 100 uh, kilometer across a lake in China. Here is the most recent result. It's entanglement swapping, or the quantum teleportation of an entangled state. Uh, this is a step more complicated than teleportation itself. Uh, the basic idea is that such a scheme is the backbone of future quantum repeaters, quantum repeaters between uh, uh, future quantum uh, quantum uh, computers. I should mention personally that uh, since there is no basic reason why uh, it should not happen, I am convinced that the future uh, Internet will be based to a large extent on such quantum uh, technologies. The question is only how fast we will be there, how long, how much time it will take. So in preparation is a, a, a program in collaboration with the Chinese Academy of Sciences under the leadership of Jian Wei Pan uh, of USDC in uh, China to establish uh, such communication possibilities using satellites. Uh, there's also some collaboration with European Space Agency because of the ground station and because of some other programs we are running. Uh, 
what you see here is a picture by uh, Chian Wei Pan on the uh, quantum uh, experiments at space scale uh, project. There will be a, a quantum satellite which will be launched around 2016. The chief scientist, as I mentioned, is uh, Chian Wei Pan at the University of Science and Technology of China. There will be uh, three ground stations in China, and there will be three to four ground stations in Europe uh, operated uh, by us at various different places. The status is that uh, we know now that the uh, quantum satellite hardware and the uh, ground station hardware are able to talk to each other, and uh, the launching should be sometimes early, uh, or uh, it's first half of 2016, and first data will then be available uh, uh, rather soon. Uh, here is an, a slide by Rupert Ursin. He was supposed to come to your uh, conference. Unfortunately, he got sick, so I asked him to give me one slide. This is his, uh, this is his technology development for an entangled photon source for a geo-orbit uh, together with the European uh, Space Agency. Uh, finally, one mention. Uh, we recently did three space experiments where we break by far the one bit per photon barrier by using long distance orbital angular momentum uh, communication across the city of Vienna. The picture you see here is a classical communication, but very recently we also demonstrated quantum communication. Uh, here's a picture of the link. As you can see, it, uh, there's a link from the roof of our institute out onto the hills. Uh, above Vienna, and that is uh, what you see is a retro reflector which sends uh, the light back to our, our institute. Uh, on the roof of our institute, you, you, you will find when you visit uh, the Hedy Lamar quantum communication telescope in the background, in the front is, uh, is my group. Uh, the Hedy Lamar was uh, a co inventor of the frequency hopping. Uh, 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 encoding system in the 1940s. And with that, I would like to thank you very much. And now you can see in the background, if you zoom in, please, uh, the laser spot coming actually right now from the, uh, from the retro reflector. And I should mention that we also have something interesting now, and I'm grateful for being up at this time because there is a total lunar eclipse, uh, which will be fascinating to watch, and we will go up to our telescope immediately after our short discussion. Thank you very much for inviting me to be there. Okay, thank you very much, Anton. I hope uh, you can enjoy the remaining session as well, and uh, now we switch our video link to Matera. Bye, Anton. Okay. Thank you uh, very much. Bye-bye. It's very nice. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, Professor Paolo Birolez and uh, Giuseppe Bianco stand by at uh, Matera uh, in uh, Laser Ranging Observatory in Italy. Paolo, can you hear me? Yes, Masahide. Hi, good morning. Yes. Good morning. Okay. Good morning. And good morning, Tokyo from Matera, Italy. We are very glad to be here to present the results of uh, our collaboration between uh, Italian Space Agency and Padova University. Uh, we are here in the control room of Matera Laser Ranging uh, together with the, the director, uh, Dr. Giuseppe Bianco, with uh, Professor Giuseppe Vallone, uh, and Dr. Daniele De Qual, and uh, the PhD student, uh, uh, the, Marco Tomasin, Matteo Schiavone, and Francesco Vedovato. Uh, we would like first uh, to give word to the uh, President of Italian Space Agency for uh, a welcome remark. So, Good morning. It is my pleasure to welcome the attendees of the fourth international conference on updating quantum cryptography and communication at the Matera Laser Ranging Observatory in Matera. Italy. The observatory belonged to the Italian Space Agency and was realized for providing Italy with the most advanced satellite laser ranging station that cooperate with premier range data 
to the International Laser Ranging Society, ILRS. I note that Dr. Bianco is presently ILRS president. However, since 2003, we endeavored in the first experimental investigation of space ground quantum channel in collaboration with the University of Padova group led by Professor Paolo Villoresi. The peculiar feature of MLRO allowed for reaching the first single photon exchange from space, which was published in 2008, and the single demonstration of quantum communication from space, which was reported this year in physical radio letters. Quantum information with this very important application, that is quantum cryptography, the main topic of your conference, will expand present technologies on a global scale thanks to the law of quantum physics. The Agenzia Spaziale Italiana, ASI, will continue to pave the way to this crucial subject in the space with MLRO and other initiatives. We foster the international collaboration in the research activities. With my best wishes for a fruitful conference, my best regard, Roberto Battiston. Now we have Dr. Bianco that described the observatory. Uh, uh, good morning, everybody. We are now in the Space Geodesy Center of the Italian Space Agency, which is a fully equipped uh, observatory uh, to uh, contribute uh, in, the, um, uh, in the worldwide observations uh, with several techniques. The fir first of all, uh, satellite and lunar laser ranging, which is carried out uh, using the Emerald uh, Observatory, which has been used also for uh, quantum communication experiments. We also have a 20-meter VLBI antenna and several GPS receivers and a gravimeter to, uh, uh, to um, contribute a full data set, uh, which is uh, provided 24 uh, hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, we are currently looking at the, uh, uh, at the MLRO uh, telescope, which is uh, the system that we have used uh, uh, to, uh, to foster, to continue those experiments uh, which, we, which we have been uh, doing together at the University of Padua since many years. And the timeline of our joint, joint research uh, started in 2003 with a project funded by University of Padua in which uh, we wanted to demonstrate the exchange of single photon along the space channel. Well, this is a very natural and playing act in the lab, but at the time it was never tested uh, uh, along uh, space channels. So as a photon source in space, we use the satellites of the family of these uh, geodynamical study satellites. Uh, and thank you to the coordinate cube retro reflectors that are on board of such satellite. Uh, the satellite aims back to the telescope on ground, the beam that has received. So in, in 2008, uh, we were able to publish, uh, together with our friends in, in Vienna, these little peaks here, uh, attesting the exchange uh, uh, of a single photon with 157 dB of global losses. After that, we worked on the concept design here uh, of a terminal for quantum communication to be mounted in the International Space Station. And back to the observatory, we analyzed the performance of the telescope and, their, and the satellites uh, with respect to the photon polarization. Uh, here you can see the Mueller matrix. Again, with a substantial funding from the Uni University of Padova, uh, we developed a, a 100 megahertz source, again using a retroreflector uh, with the states uh, um, uh, from Moodle and Bias bases uh, uh, that act uh, from in orbit. And after five years, uh, uh, we solve all the relevant problems and the um, uh, AZ University of Padova team was able to demonstrate a quantum communication uh, along the path here of, uh, of um, a satellite uh, that uh, uh, re say demonstrate uh, uh, QBER levels suitable for QKD and other uh, quantum information protocols. More recently, we demonstrated uh, uh, the exchange of single photon, uh, and we have th this peak here, uh, from uh, MIO, so medium here to orbit, uh, and in particular with the Italian satellite uh, LAGOS-2, uh, uh, with more than 7,000 kilometers away. Uh, even more recently, and this is quite a fresh appearance, uh, uh, we have observed quantum interference along a space channel, uh, uh, doing quantum measurements, exploiting temporal modes uh, of the photons. Uh, 
here we see here on the bottom the interferometers uh, we use it uh, for prepare and to measure uh, the state after uh, the reflection and modulation in space and here on top we see the extracting and destructing interference uh, uh, following the value of the kinematic phase imposed uh, on the qubit by the motion of the satellites and of course all these were not possible without the efforts of all these enthusiastic uh, collaborators along the years uh, to, this, uh, to this project. And I give word now to, to Professor Vallone to explain a bit uh, inside lab. Okay, good morning to everybody. Essentially in the video you see the laser room of Matera laser ranging observatory in which we generate our qubits. In particular, this is the model of laser used as seed for the qubit and the bright laser ranging beam that are perfectly synchronized. And the synchronization is crucial to discriminate the photon from the background. And the video now shows the measurement room in which the photon coming from the satellite are detected with our single photon detector. And here we were able to discriminate the four polarization states coming from space, like in the BB84 protocol. However, also time being can be used for encoding quantum information, and indeed you see the Max Zender interferometer used for the demonstration of time being interference that appeared just today on the archive. And finally, the qubit and the laser ranging beam are combined with this beam splitter and are sent to the telescope, directed to the satellite, and then are reflected back and, and detected. And so, to conclude, essentially what we have demonstrated that polarization is viable for QKD, but also time beam can be used for space quantum key distribution. And so therefore now, it's time to welcome Alice on board on a satellite. And we very much uh, would like to welcome Alice and as well the international collaboration on this subject that is actually challenging but promising of, of results uh, for a global network and quantum communication. So hello again from Padua. We, best, we wish uh, the best for, for the conference uh, and ciao Tokyo. Okay, thank you Paolo, Giuseppe and all the colleagues and uh, have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay, now we move on to uh, the next speaker, uh, Dr. Morio Toyoshima, Director of the Space Communication Systems Lab of NICT. So thank you very much for your kind introduction, Masahide. I'm really honored to be here to present our latest achievement on satellite ground optical communications. I'm Morio Toyoshima, uh, Space Communication System Lab in NICT. So I'll show the video first. So we developed really small laser communication terminal on board 50 kilogram class micro satellite, which is now <laughs> orbiting in low Earth orbit. So we also developed small onboard camera like this, so we want to send the image taken by onboard camera via optical link. So we are now conducting laser communication experiment between optical ground station and micro satellite. So we want to send the image taken by our camera via optical link. And here shows uh, our newly developed one meter uh, optical telescope for uh, laser communication. So the optical system is a uh, classical Cassegrain type, and uh, this telescope can track uh, LEO satellites very precisely. So more than one ton class optical system can be installed on the NASMIS bench, uh, right hand side and the left hand side. And also, we developed two more optical ground stations in Okinawa and in Kashima Space Center, like this. So we want to achieve something like a site diversity for this free space research. So we are really welcome to have a collaboration as a test bed for a free space research. So these telescopes can be remotely operated from this headquarter uh, building. And this is a real uh, experiment video, so this was recorded uh, several days ago. So 
uh, telescope is now trying to track the satellite, a real satellite, and you can see uh, received signal on the screen of the oscilloscope behind the telescope like this. So you can see now a little bit. And we transmitted two laser beams to the microsatellites to reduce the atmospheric turbulence by using a multiple laser transmission. And you can see a downlink signal in the middle, uh, like a twinkling, with a twinkling effect, like this. So we are now evaluating atmospheric turbulence now. So this, this project is called Socrates Project which is uh, the same name uh, for the satellite. And the main mission are following. The first is in-orbit verification of acquisition, tracking, and pointing performance. The second is the data acquisition of laser beam propagation at various wavelengths. The third is laser communication experiments with error correcting codes. So, we categorize these items as full success level. For the further experiment, we are now planning to have uh, two more experiments. One is a basic experiment for satellite QKD, and also international collaborative experiment with international optical ground stations. So here shows the uh, left-hand side shows a uh, uh, flight model of laser communication terminal. The diameter is just a five centimeter. So receiver optics are shown in the middle and right hand side the transmitter optics. There are several laser sources on board, two laser beams at 1.5 micron and 0 0.98 0 micron are used for communication. Uh, the other two uh, 0.8 micron laser beams are used for quantum measurement for satellite QKD. So this slide shows how small it is. In 2006, the mass, terminal mass was on the order of 140 kilogram. So left-hand side with a 26 centimeter diameter. Nowadays, in 20, uh, 2014, we could succeed to miniaturize this terminal the mass is just uh, on the order of six kilograms. So you can see how small it is now. So we conducted image transmission experiment by via optical link. So left hand side shows the received uh, signal during the experiment. As a result, we succeeded to transmit image taken by small camera on board. So it was placed to the list on 3rd of June this year. So we achieved now full success level. So to, my, to our knowledge, so this, this was the first, world first uh, experiment in terms of 50 kilogram class micro satellites. Uh, in addition, uh, for the further experiment, we are now planning to have a basic experiment for satellite QKD we are now preparing Bob optics in optical ground station. So we coherent pulses with uh, non-orthogonal polarization will be transmitted from this SOTA terminal and uh, polarization will be evaluated by using uh, Bob optics in OGS. And we want to have another one. So we are now conducting also uh, international experiment with several space agency now, so aiming for the establishment on international collaborative communication network. So in France, CUNES already established laser communication link, our microsatellite to a French OGS with adaptive optics. So we got a very significant data. And we want to have a more opportunity with uh, DLR and NASA and the Canadian Space Agency and so on to have a more uh, pro propagation data at different sites. So finally, let me conclude as follows. So I introduced NICT's laser communication mission called Socrates SOTA. 
So the experiment was successfully performed, and the full success level was achieved. So basic measurement for satellite QKD will be conducted soon. So we are now installing it. And we are now conducting international experiment campaign. And we want to have more opportunity with more international space agencies. So that's all. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Molio. Now, the last topic is Tokyo Free Space Optical Testbed. It was constructed last August to develop optical and quantum communications and sensing technologies. So let us uh, see how it looks like. It is a terrestrial link between NICT and University of Electoral Communications, and the distance is about eight kilometers. The transmitter is at the University of Electoral Communications. The transmitter is in an all-weather telescope dome. Now, Professor Shimizu and his students are working inside, and uh, you see the optical transmitter and the optical code word is uh, generated and sent through the uh, single-mode fiber and guided to this collimator here. Actually, we have a two collimators in the left side, and this is a beacon beam emitter, and this is a CCC camera to capture the target. Then the optical code words are sent to the NICT terminal. Now you see the LED spot is twinkling. This is a beacon beam sent from the NICT uh, terminal. The receiver is in the NICT premises. And the receiver is all weather container type terminal and the scanner on the top. This scanner can be used not only for laser communications, but also optical sensing. So it can scan all the area of the sky. So let us see the face uh, of this scanner. In the left side, we have the main aperture and light top is a CCD camera and light bottom is a beacon beam emitter. Okay, now switched on. And the signal is first received by this main aperture and guided down to the optics on the table and collimated and then focused into the single mode fiber and finally detected by the photodiode. So this is a received signal waveform of 10 megahertz on off keying and the signal level always fluctuating due to the atmospheric scintillation. The beam footprint at the receiver side is about eight meters, covering the sixth floor here. So we set up a tapping apparatus and observe the received beam to evaluate wiretap risks and information leakage quantitatively. And actually, when the weather is fine, Eve can tap a part of the signal. Okay, this is a Tokyo Free Space Optical Testbed. And using this testbed, we are now developing a new technology of physical layer cryptography. So it originally dates back at the middle of the 70s when Aaron Weiner wrote the seminar paper on the wiretap channel. So he considered a problem of trade-off between the reliability and secrecy of communications over the wiretap channel. This is a one to two channel, and assuming the EBIT channel can be physically bounded, he shows that there exists a code that can transmit this amount of bits faithfully by unit time, making the leaked information to EBIT arbitrarily small. And the code should include not only check bits for error correction, but also random bit to deceive EBIT. And the information transmitted by such a code can be secure against any attacks with powerful computers. So this is physical layer cryptography. And we have two typical examples of them. One is free space optical communications, and the other is a short distance RF communication, such as drone data link. Both cases are basically line of sight communication. So if the channel can be physically bounded, and under this relaxed assumption, one may pursue 
higher transmission rate, keeping the security against any powerful computer attacks. So let me show a recent result on FSO wiretap channel. So this view graph is a signal waveform at Bob of 10 megahertz on off signals. And this is for EEP. And uh, from these waveform, we can construct the probability distributions of zero and one. And upper part is for Bob, and two peaks are well separated, so the main channel is almost error free. And lower one is for EEP, and two peaks overlap with each other, suffer from the finite bit error rate. And in the other time slot, you see double peaks for the signal one. So there are two channel realizations in this time slot. And in the other slot, we have different distributions. So the channel characteristics varies in a time scale of 10 milliseconds. And based on this estimation, we can evaluate the achievable secrecy rate. So you can see that one megabps information theoretically secure communications should be possible even at a heavy channel attenuation of 60 dB. So this performance can be marked something around here in the graph of the secrecy rate as a function of the channel attenuation. Now, red curve represents a QKD performance assuming one gigahertz clock rate and 100 hertz dark count. So it's really hard to generate a secure key at the 40 dB attenuation. Blue one is optical communications in which there is nothing to do with security. So there is a huge gap between these two extreme cases. Now, black lines represent the physical layer cryptography. So this can uh, cover the intermediate region in wide area of performances. We can also estimate the leaked information as a function of the code length quantitatively by using our recent theory of finite length analysis. So given several secrecy rate, we can know how long code are required. So it's about a thousand to 10,000, so they are really practical scale. Okay, let me also mention new network with drones. So we assume there are four areas, A, B, C, and D, to control drones. So in area A, we generate three kinds of keys, and they are supplied to drone, and also the ELO key to the controller. Drone takes off. Control communication can be one-time part encrypted by this ELO key, and hence cannot be hacked. Two keys on the ground can relay to the area B, and the second key is supplied to the second controller. And uh, drone control can securely take NOVA. The third key on the ground relayed to area C and further relayed to the area D for a later purpose. And the second drone takes off. And this control communication is again one time part encrypted. And two drones establish a data link and transmit the sensor data by one time part to the second drone. Second one is controlled by this yellow key and then make an optical downlink of this data to the ground station, which can be decrypted only by relayed key and mission completed. Okay, so this is a basic con concept and we are developing this secure drone network technology in collaboration with Japanese company Pro drone and science trading. So let me show a video on of ongoing experiments. So we use Tokyo Free Space Optical Testbed and QKD platform and combine them with a drone communication technology. So the first thing to do is to supply the secure key from the QKD platform to the drone communication unit. This is made by the authenticated memory stick. Now the secure key is safely transferred to the communication units. And this is a standard SPAS system used for uh, controlling the drone operating at 4.2.4 gigahertz. So let's see the drone control and data exchange. Two drones take off. And control signals are one time part encrypted by key one and key two and making drone unhackable and two drones establish data link and transmit uh, sensor data securely by one time path. So the inset is a copy of a drone control monitor screen. 
So this is the encrypted signal. Now encryption is switched off. Then the command can be hacked. So the encryption is switched on again. Then this turn to complete random stream. Okay, this is a link experiment with a ground station. So drone are searching the beacon beam from the ground station and tracking the ground station by steering camera. So this is a view from drone, and the drone is acquiring the beacon beam. Beacon beam is a LED uh, razor light. So now the link was established. So this result has been press released today, and we continue to improve our technology and will demonstrate secure drone network technology in wider area.